Hello ladies and gentle hams. Um, welcome to your Friday spot here on Pagan's Perspective. This week we are talking about empathy and magical defense. One question from the gentle witch 14. Um, I was curious if a subject can be done on empathy and how it can impact your spiritual, mental, and physical life. Can it be mistaken for illnesses or other people by other people when really you are just not controlling it or don't know how to? Um, can it be mistaken for illnesses? Yes. Uh, people. Actually, you can even have empathy with illnesses. Like, although that's kind of just science. Um, <laughs> what I mean by that is, uh, you can have empathy with illnesses, like even long distances, say, uh, your partner goes on a business trip or something, and they get a cold, and for some strange reason you have a cold suddenly, even though you haven't left the house very often. Um, more than likely not it's a coincidence, but it can happen that you, um, develop these symptoms when you don't physically maybe have a cold, you're just kind of reacting to picking up on what this other person is going through. Um, they asked how can it affect your magical workings, spiritual, mental, and physical life. It can affect your magical workings by basically the only way that I can imagine would be um, to make it harder for you to focus. I don't think it would be something to where like you would stop <laughs> being able to do magic or feeling any spiritual connection to anything. I don't see empathy ever doing that, um, it's more just something that would probably distract you, uh, from keeping a clear conscience, maybe, and if you weren't very good at controlling it. Um, and personally, I don't really have empathy, so I can't speak, uh, directly on the subject. I used to have empathy whenever, um, I was a younger kid, and, like, my psychic abilities are kind of coming into awareness. It was like this weird roulette of abilities. One day or week I would uh, see spirits walking around as if they were people and then the next week or whatever uh, I would feel people's emotions and I could pinpoint emotions and what they were thinking about and feeling about and you know um, and it would just kind of go between different things like I'd have visions you know it was like a roulette of psychic abilities and uh I basically ended up not landing on empathy, thank God. <laughs> um, I would not really want to have empathy because it would suck. <laughs> it's the only way I can think to do it. And empathy is something that goes along with vampirism a lot of times. Like, you often see the two things together. And so you would think that I would have empathy or be into empathy. Um, but I don't consider that I have empathy the way that other people I have seen claim it do. Does that make sense? Um, I have empathy in the sense that we all human beings have empathy. We're able to uh, feel each other's emotions, feel sorry for one another, uh, have grief for one another, like feel bad that our friend is going through something. I have that of course. I'm not uh, psycho or what's that word? I don't know. The thing that you don't have emotion. Anyway, it's not important. <laughs> um, so, with me and feeling people's emotions, it's more like I just feel it and I can sense their emotions. Um, I, I can be very good at easily detaching myself from their emotions. It's more like I can just sense what their emotion is, not getting involved in it. So, maybe I do have a form of empathy, it's just practice to the point that I don't even recognize it as empathy anymore because I'm not suffering the way that this person is suffering, and usually that's what empathy is. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, anyway. Next question. Please make a video on basic magic defense in daily life and, um, mental combat. Psychic combat, psychic attacks, blah, 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 how to defend from those. Um, the best way to defend from a psychic attack is very, very simple. Uh, it's just to close your eyes and envision yourself being engulfed by this increasingly growing white light. And um, that's the simplest way for most people to guard from psychic attacks. And, you know, 
hold a sense of safeness and security and protection when you envision this light around you. That's the simplest way. There are other ways, of course, that you can look into psychic shielding and you can practice that. There's many techniques online, many books written about it. Um, what I just described to you is somewhat a term, a type of psychic shielding. Um, there are like spells you can do, of course, uh, charms you can wear, amulets, that type of thing. But the basic, easiest thing to do is just to envision yourself in a very white, protective, glowing, growing light that encompasses you and whatever you're trying to protect. Anywho, um, that's my video for today, so I hope you enjoyed it. Hope I didn't ramble too much and make no sense. Thanks for watching. See you later.